Hey guys, Jason with Fat Fender Garage, and we are here with the world famous Nathan Porter with Porter Real Fabrication, and we're here in Arizona. And this is a new 1967 to 1972 full Porter built chassis for your Ford pickup truck. So, a lot of these frames are designed for air coilovers, but they're also designed for performance, reliability, and really just have that comfort and that better ride. And so. We got Nate here, uh, so I don't have to sound really stupid about talking about things maybe I'm not 100% you know, accurate about and I misrepresent the product. So I'm trying to uh, present as good of a you know, video for you with all the information that's gonna be important. So first off, uh, you know, how, how long have we been working on these F100 frames? We've been working together on these for, for quite a while now. A couple of years in the making and um, it's nice to finally see them start coming to fruition. It is, we definitely went through some uh, what was it we did first? I can't well, remember. We've had to make a couple of revisions over the over the, the last. We first oh we scanned it. I'm sorry. Yeah. So we did we, we went through the scanning process. Man, my mind. It's been so long. Right. I forget all the things we did. So we went through and we had the frames 3D scanned and went and original frames to try to give us a closer representation. But then after that, it really came down to you spending a lot of time on the computer and getting the geometry and everything to work together, which wasn't easy. Like initially, the idea was hopefully to use the cross member from the C10s and see if that would cross over and, and build it, but that didn't work out. What happened? Correct. Well, originally the thing that made the most sense was to take our C10 platform and just transfer it over to the Ford trucks. Unfortunately, with the Coyote motors, they're so much wider, we had to do a whole different revision on the front end to make a wider front cross member, wider frame rails to help allow that Coyote motor to fit nicely inside the frame. So what you're not getting is just a revamped Chevy C10 product in a Ford. It's actually completely been designed from the ground up to work with the Ford pickup truck. Correct. Like one thing that's different is we didn't just keep the same geometry we used for the Chevy truck. The Chevy truck's a little bit different wheelbase, a little heavier, a little different things to where we had to make some different tweaks to allow this suspension geometry to be more, more in line with the Ford and its weight and its roll centers and all those different things that go with it. So it's, it's been revamped. It does utilize a C10 based spindle and it does utilize the C10 ball joints, but from there We've done different tweaks to the camber and the caster and the curves to help you get it to where it can perform best for the Ford truck. Here in the back, uh, obviously this is a, a, a truck that's designed to lay frame. And initially when we took the truck, it was an F100 truck and we laid the frame down on it, we noticed that the rockers are almost two inches off the ground. And that kind of defeats a little bit of the purpose of laying frame and getting that low looks. Like I said, the whole purpose of an airbag truck, as far as the extreme ones, is not just ride quality, but it's to have that, that wow factor when it's sitting on the ground. People come up at the shows and they just ask you all sorts of questions. So what we've done is we've made this to where the lowest part of the frame rail is even with the lowest part of the rocker panel on the Ford truck. That lets it have that super low ride height, lets it have that super low stance when you're parked and the air suspension is completely deflated. You know, you had mentioned ride quality earlier and one thing I've noticed about airbag trucks, we see a lot of trucks come in and they've got other people's parts and pieces and widgets that they've stuck in there and to get it on the ground. And then you go drive it and it's super bad quality ride. I mean, occasionally like you might get one that comes in, it's okay. But I've noticed that, you know, you don't want your bags maxed out, you know, and a lot of these guys, they get it so low, but by the time they air it up to get it off the ground to clear, to be at a ride height that's good, they don't, the, the geometry of the bag isn't good and so they max it out and it's a terrible ride. Oh, definitely, the airbag or it's an air spring, it's designed to be at a certain ride height with a certain pressure. So a lot of, a lot of math, a lot of trial and error, a lot of different things go into making that to where the bag's gonna be at the height it needs to be, yeah. have the pressure it needs to be to give you that, that nice ride quality. As you mentioned, if it's not set up correctly, the airbag could have too low of an air pressure in it or too high of an air pressure in it, making the ride either rough and bumpy or super soft and spongy. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So back here, let's talk about the suspension. Now this is a little bit of an upgrade that we did on this truck because uh, uh, you know, the, the plan was to take it to SEMA and there were a few changes, so it did make, but now we've got this back on track with a, a new customer. And so this is a little cantilever system. So talk to me about this, the inspiration of this and what kind of made you design this. Yeah, I've always been a fan of the, the rocker arms and the bell cranks and stuff like that. You see a lot of the Formula One cars, a lot of the Indy cars back in the day, there's, there's really small space requirements, so you gotta be creative with your shock mounting or coilover mounting on those cars. And it's kind of something we did here. It's, it's more for tricks. It looks really cool. Um, you get the same function out of the shock, but you get a really cool way to make it package. So we've got a rocker arm assembly here, rides on a Delrin bushing. And really this whole thing just pivots. It's got a push rod that comes up from the suspension. So if I lift up here, you'll see. Yeah. 
it just pivots this whole suspension and allows the shock to actuate. That was way so heavier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> hurt yourself. Jeez, I got to so work out. So it's just a really, a really cool trick way to, to have that shock function. You're going to get a brand new Curry rear end, right? Correct. And so you, you can get it with a true track, posi traction, uh, pretty much any gear setup you want. Obviously, that's going to determine what kind of transmission you're using. And so uh, those are factors that come into play. So, you know, if it's a chassis that we're selling you, there's a lot of information we're going to want, we're going to want to know. We're going to want to know your, your transmission. We're going to make sure that you understand what RPMs you're going to be at and tire size will make a difference too. So those three things come into play when determining what rear end you're going to put in here because it's not always, I mean, there is, you know, performance that you can gain out of it and there's also fuel economy you can gain out of it. And so it just kind of depends on what you're after. Definitely, and, definitely. Um, there's, how there's, rowdy you want to be. There's ways that we can tailor different things to really suit the needs of the, of the end user, the client. Wheel size, wheel height, all those different things can determine certain placement on the chassis, depth of the notch, just those different things because when you're spending money on a high dollar chassis like this, you want to have it to be tailored just to your needs and just to the needs of your truck. So come talk to me back here. Uh, we've got a Watts link here. I once said it was like a Panhard bar. But you different. Know, but different. <laughs> and I got uh, razzed by him a lot. It won't ever go away. It won't ever go away. So this Watts link, I mean, obviously a Watts link is not new. It's been around for a long time. But I think you might have been one of the first guys to put it on this, these chassis for air ride. You know, they've been around for a long time. It, it is pretty popular. Um, we actually weren't the first. Plenty of guys have done it, but there's different ways to locate the axle laterally in the frame, and the different ways have different purposes, pros and cons to each. What a lot of people might not understand about suspension is it's really, it's impossible to get the best of every aspect of a suspension. You have to have compromise, you have to pick and choose what you're gonna do. Um, on the airbag suspension, one of the big advantages the Watts Link offers is it keeps the axle from shifting laterally in the frame. When you have big wide tires, and you run out of room for four link bars and cantilevers and frame rails, you wanna have that, that clearance to be consistent on both sides of the frame. So as this rear differential travels up and down, it keeps that distance consistent on each side. Whereas a pan hard bar or a track bar, which is a very popular way to do it as well, locates the axle laterally, and we'll see that on a, on a different frame over here. When the axle moves through its travel, it's going to have a shift to the side to side slightly, but it still moves. It follows the arc of the bar. This Watts Link set up here, again, it allows that rear differential to remain constant in the center of the chassis. Underneath these little cover plates we got right here, these were all the air fittings are. And so uh, Nate and I, we kind of spent some time, come up with a little system that will allow us to hide all that stuff. And uh, well, there's a lot of things about the frame that are kind of, kind of cool. So, like for instance, we got these, uh, it's a fully boxed frame, but at the same time, part of the frame has been opened up on the sides. The little windows have been created to allow you to still run and access and run brake lines or fuel lines or a power lines if you're trying to get power back to your battery without having to be so close to the exhaust system. Definitely. And, uh, and if somebody wanted covers, I guess you could cut out a cover and they could, yeah. they could tap that on and install it. So for sure. So this is, Obviously, this truck is set up for air ride, but also the largest brake setup that you could actually purchase. So this is the full, the full money for brakes. Correct. 14 inch wheel woods, front and back, six piston calipers, ready to go. And you Definitely. can get the calipers in red, Yeah, red, black. black. So, Pretty much two options from Willwood are gonna be red yeah. or black. So. From there, you can powder coat them, I, I you suspect. Can, you can you do could, custom powder yeah, coat, custom take powder coating. like that for sure. Uh, anyway, so kind of, kind of a cool setup, uh, very robust chassis. Um, very solid, very well built. As you look at it, you can see that a lot of time was taken in, in designing this. The welds are just incredible as you're used to seeing from Portabilt. And then also a new power steering rack. So it's set up for power steering. I noticed a lot of other companies where they will use a rebuilt, refurbished power steering rack, which quite often I've had those fail maybe 30% of the time. They're, they just leak and and they struggle to have them work as well as they should. And what company are you yeah. using right here? Well, we've been doing this for a long time. We've been making suspension systems for these trucks for almost 20 years now. And over the years, you know, we found that Unisteer, Naval Manufacturing, has been one of the best companies we've been able to find that offers a high quality rack, offers a, a new housing, all new internals, and it makes it to where it's just, it's more expensive, obviously, but yet you get a higher quality product. And, and as you look at this chassis, you can tell 
The one thing that we don't skimp on is quality. We do our best to make the chassis not only look and perform the best it can, but we want to put on the best components with it as well so they made up and match properly. There's a lot of ways you can cut corners and save money. Brakes, steering is one of the quickest ways to do that, but it comes with a cost. You know, you want to have something that's going to last, something that is quality, and something that is going to be a, a great saver to the investment you put into on Well, a, it's on your foundation. Exactly. Right? You don't go build a house no. and put little foundation, no, tiny definitely. little foundation in to build a beautiful house on. Exactly. You're gonna put big, beefy foundation. And so yeah. some, some of this might feel like it's a little bit overkill. I've seen other chassis companies out there that you know do a lot of the same similar things and everything's skimmed down smaller and um, yeah, you might save a little bit of steel, it might save maybe a day's yeah. worth of labor or something like that. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, the reason why Porterbilt's a good fit for us is because we try to err on the side of quality and make sure what we're doing is going to be, it will do the job for the customer and what they're hoping that it will accomplish. Uh, and that doesn't always mean it's going to be the lowest price. One thing that has helped build our reputation at Porterbilt is our whole focus is on quality. You know, there's a lot of companies where you'll focus on volume because you got to make the money, you got to pump out the parts, you got to you got to have that quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. Quick turnaround's not something that we're obviously known for, but it's something that we're getting better at. But the focus is always on quality. We want to make it the nicest we can, the best we can. Um, something different about what we do, this whole chassis is made out of 3 16 plate, 188 plate. You got a couple pieces of tubing in here, but this whole thing started as a 3 16 flat sheet of P&O steel. From there, it was cut, formed, pressed, welded, ground. We grind all of our frame rails to make it look a little bit cleaner because it is a nicer product. And again, it's just something, our whole focus, if it's not to my standards, we don't, we don't give it to the customer. We make sure it's the way that I want it to be. And I want to have Porterbilt known as a company that makes the nicest stuff, not the company that makes the most stuff. So somebody asked me the other day, they said, uh, saw a little message, why don't you just get square tubing and cut it and then re-weld it back together and end up with a frame? Like, I mean, that, that's a way and people do do that. It, it is a way and it's, it's an efficient way to do it too. That's yeah. how it is. The reason that, that you go to a square tube design would be to save all the time and energy that it takes to weld this whole thing. I mean, think about this. Could we put a piece of two by four tubing right here? Of course, how much time would that save us? That could save us easily 10 hours worth of welding and grinding we do on this por portion of the chassis. But I don't like the way it looks. Yeah. I wouldn't want it on my truck. So yeah. that's not how we do it. And especially here at Fat Fender Garage, we're not racing to be the cheapest out there. There's plenty of guys that are they're out there, they're just driving down, hey, let's be the cheapest, because they think that if you're the cheapest, you'll sell the most. And, and frankly, that's just not how it works. Um, there's a lot of good companies that build a good product and they're super busy out there. So, For sure. so let's, ta let's talk a little bit about this uh, chassis behind us here. So I wanna talk about this frame a little bit. This is the 1957 to 60 Ford F100 frame. And this is on coilovers. And so there's a lot of coilover companies out there. Why Ride Tech? Well, you know, Ride Tech and I, we've done business together for you know, almost 20 years. Since the okay. beginning, we started out using them. And that's not the only reason. They've always had a reputation for quality. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely the same with the coilovers. They've teamed up with Fox to actually manufacture the shock. And they have Hyperco make their spring. It's all American made. It's all high quality. We want to use the best parts we can find. I know the other day uh, we had an issue with some coilovers. and. Uh, is a chassis that a customer had purchased and we were trying to make some adjustments and figure out spring rates and I called Ride Tech to get some adjustments and then they said what color are the coils you know the springs and I was like black they go not ours and so then it quickly taught me that uh, people will buy the Ride Tech shock and then go buy a spring put on there sell it as a full Ride Tech package and you think you're getting that and again another way to cut corners and at the end of the day, you're not really truly getting the full ride tech. And, and maybe it's just a spring, and maybe it's not that big a deal, but uh, it, for me, it feels, felt a little misleading. I felt like you're not representing exactly the way uh, it was interpreted, at least for me, you know? I thought I was buying ride tech, I was getting right, or you know, getting the whole you thing. Definitely, but, you definitely assume that for sure. So, uh, super good quality parts here. Now, a four link here as well. Um, this is kind of the base package for brakes on this truck. Uh, it's still Willwood uh, calipers, and then you've got a, a Curry nine inch rear end, uh, and this basically is a Panhard bar right here, Correct. which is just like a Watts link, but different. But different. Okay. Yeah, like we talked about earlier, the, <laughs> the way the track bar works is it, um, it still locates the differential laterally in the frame. 
but it's going to follow an arc. The longer that the bar is, the less side to side shift it has. On a coilover, it's a static height, so you only have a couple inches, you know, about three inches of travel anyways. And so through that three inches, this rear end <coughs> might shift a quarter of an inch side to side through its travel, so, which... So not too much. So, uh, but basically the same thing, uh, a little bit of a different design element through here. Yeah. Um, just to kind of change it up a little bit. Yeah, one thing that, that I like to do is, you know, things change over time, our styles change over time, our perceptions change over time. I always try to integrate new things into the new products we make mm -hmm. and take all the experience we've learned from the past and try to update things and make things better as we move forward. And every Very now cool. and again, you get an idea and you think, hey, I'll try that out. And I think it looked pretty cool on this one. Well, I think hopefully we've explained enough about the chassis. So really we're offering, uh, we'll have a chassis next week, I think. So I've been told. Yeah, towards the end of next week, we should have <laughs> Anyways, the- Anyways, uh, a 1953 to 1956, we got an air ride and a coilover chassis that is coming. Um, the air ride actually will be for sale. Um, and then, uh, we'll have covered 53 to pretty much 79. The cool thing about the 67 to 72 is that it's very much like the 73 to 79 F100s. And so we got a little bit of a bed modification adjustment to make, but really all the engineering and all the work has been done for that. So we'll be able to cover from 53 to 79 two wheel drive. And so another cool thing we're doing, uh, we also have a new chassis that we'll have in about six weeks. Right. Tell us about what we got coming yeah. out there. Yeah, so we're working on a, a 67 four wheel drive frame as well for Jason in Fat Fender Garage. Um, it's gonna be, you know, same but different, right? Same but different. So four wheel drive, we're getting into some different stuff and it's gonna so be you, exciting. So you're not, so you know, like this one has a very shallow arch and it's a little bit different on the 57 to the 60s. In order to get it a little low, you kind of have to put a, a little bit of an arch. Definitely. Even though where it's not an air ride, uh, it's, it's better to have a little arch than C notching and, and yeah, that and kind of stuff. I mean, so. the way it works, you have to have a certain amount of travel between your rear differential and the bump stop. You want to have about three inches minimum on yeah, a coilover truck. And you have to have a certain thickness of frame to maintain that strength as well. Right. And depending on how high you want the truck to sit or how low you want it to sit, the height of this notch is gonna change. Mm -hmm. So it's either gonna kick up more if you wanna go lower mm -hmm. or less if you want it more of no. a stock-ish height. And on this one, we're not actually going super low with this client. So it, this truck, when it's all done, can have the capacity to go about two inches, two and a half inches lower. Uh, we did not go with drop spindles on the front uh, that was the adjustment we made. And so we can actually add the drop spindles on the front, lower a couple components on the frame, and this will get this a little bit lower. And that's, that's probably more the standard feature, but every client and every customer we deal with is a little bit different and they have a few little height adjustments. And so we kind of set this truck up, took some photos, sent it to the customer, what he thought of the height, and that's what we went with. There's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff we're coming out with, the 67 to the 72 four wheel drive pickup trucks. And then also that will translate into 73 to 79 because there's all the similarities there. And then with a few little other adjustments, we'll be able to cover the 73, 79 Broncos as well. So all four wheel drive components and eventually we might go into those bull nose trucks and the OBS trucks and we might, you know, start going forward. I know we have a, a frame we're going to build for a guy that'll take care of some of the F1s. All the things that you see here will also be available in a front and back half kit, if you so need that, you're trying to save a little bit of money. Uh, I've had someone ask me, why a front kit and a back kit? And I said, well, there's an easy explanation. Maybe you don't have a lot of free money, but you got a lot of free time. And so you wanna cut all the rivets and you wanna save some money and get that in there. It'll still perform good. You might get a tiny little bit more flex in your, in your uh, suspension with, you know, bolting everything in, but at the end of the day, it'll still have the good ride quality. But you can save some money if you're willing to put a little sweat equity into it. Nate, thanks for coming thanks. over, man. I really appreciate thanks, it. Uh, and with that, thanks for watching, and most importantly, go buy some chassis. Thanks.